What's up, you guys? Today, we're going to talk about how to slice in the Edison audio editor. If you want to learn more than just slicing, please check out my Edison audio editor video above that goes through everything in it in depth. However, if you just want the nitty gritty of getting things sliced, you can throw them into sampler plugins. Let's check it out. Please like and subscribe. So here we have the Edison audio editor. I've got a sample in here. If I click play, I can achieve getting a sample in here by either dragging something into the sampler or clicking this record button and playing something into Edison via whatever effects track it's on. If I'm on effects track one, I want to link whatever I'm going to play into it onto one. If I put it on the master, it'll record everything. So there's two places we can go to to go ahead and start adding markers. We can either click over here, in which case, in which case if we left click, it'll add a marker wherever our little line is at here or the beginning of a loop or a selection. Okay. We can also right click it and it's going to add a region, which is a whole area. The difference between regions and markers is a region is going to be defined by an end and a beginning. So if I double click this, I'll select a region. Whereas a marker is just defined by the beginning all the way up until it hits something else. This marker hits nothing, goes to the end. This marker hits this marker, and so, as you can see, it stops there. However, if I drag this back and I double click here, we're going to select all of this and disregard the end of this region because regions are meant to be selections of a specific space, whereas markers are just going to be a point in time. So what we can do with this region is we can drag it into our playlist here. Same thing we can also do with a marker. If we select the marker area, we can drag it in. And that's cool, but we're going to delete that region because what we want is we want markers because markers are going to let us play slices in Fruity Slicer or Slice X or <clears throat> other samplers like that. I've been using this option over here. We also have our auto slicing option. We've got dull auto slicing, which will pick up bigger transients. And uh, since this isn't drums, we don't got much. Medium auto slicing, we get a lot. Sharp auto slicing, there's a lot more. We have small grid slicing, medium grid slicing, or large grid slicing. And these are generally time-based, which means that whatever our BPM is set to for audio or Edison, it's going to change how those come out. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to set the BPM to what it's supposed to be. I'm going to do a quick auto detect. Except I'm going to right click here and I am going to go with our grid slicing. And now we should be on time. And so if I want to test this, I can test it by playing them. And it seems on time to me. So now that we got those slices where we want them, we can drag these into a sampler or into their own space. We can see these marks are still here. If I open it in a fruity slicer channel, you can see it's the exact same slices we made or into slice X. It's the exact same slices that we made in Edison. So instead of auto slicing, if we come over here, this is going to have the same options, add region, which we just did earlier, which I showed you has a defined beginning and end. Add marker, which is these. We can also set loops. So if we select a specific area, we can set loop, and this loop is going to play over and over again. And when we export this, it's going to do the same thing, which is great for synthesis. Let's say we've got this sample. So we're going to do 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 and like right here, let's say, we're going to do a loop. Now this loop, I want to hear it. That works. I'm going to unselect that. I'm going to drag this whole sample. Okay. I'm going to take this. I'm going to open this in a new sampler. So now that I have this open, I'm going to make sure use loop points is on. 
And what's going to happen is when I play it, I can change the sample start to be right at the loop. Right? And we've created our own wavetable, our own synth, basically, that we can play with and use <clears throat> when creating sounds and doing sound design. I am now going to delete and get rid of that loop. Our next option in this is going to be set first downbeat. And what downbeat is going to do is wherever I click this, it's going to snap to the grid in the playlist for that downbeat. So as you can see, I'm off time here, but that green downbeat that we created, that's right here, perfectly on time. So we can delete that, get rid of that. Our next option we have is going to be to delete, so we can select an area and delete these. We can also rename all, which will let us rename by section. So beginning, that's spelled wrong, end, spelled wrong, and keep going, so on and so forth. We have quick rename all, which is going to let us choose from this menu to rename these instead of choosing names for ourselves. Auto rename all, which it's going to try and identify and rename all of these. It's good for drums, as you can tell. We've also got assigned trigger notes to all. And so now we can choose what notes we play on our keyboard in order to trigger the sections, section by section, in the same way we rename them. And then we have assign all to, and we can do a whole keyboard, white notes, just black notes, whatever, in order for us to play all these. So we'll go whole keyboard. Underneath this, we have our auto slice options, which we went over. We have detect beats, where it'll try and detect the beats and put markers on them. We have detect pitch regions, which is really cool, especially if you have something monophonic, because it'll try and go by pitch. So if I click this, it'll try and set a marker every time the pitch changes or it thinks that the pitch is changing or it's a different note. Next, we have zero cross check all regions. And what this basically is going to do is your speaker goes out or in. Out is positive and it's creating an, an excess of force or a positive pressure. In, it's pulling back or sucking air backwards, creating negative pressure. This pressure creates the sound waves that your ears perceive as sound. What happens is when it's at a positive, and all of a sudden the information says, hey, we need to be at a negative, you've got a problem, and that creates clicks and pops. So doing the zero crossing is going to shift every single one of these to a zero point in the center where it's neither going to be pushing or pulling, but at a single stress-free point. Down here at the bottom, we have freeze all, which is just gonna make it so we can't edit things. And if you're ever not seeing these slices, we have an option down here on the bottom right called View Regions or Markers. I can click that. We can't see them, but they are still there. So click that and you'll see them. And that, my friends, is a down and dirty, quick tutorial on slicing and how to slice an Edison and what each of the options does. If this video was helpful, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. Warren with Scale Audio and adios.